hitchhiking in Idaho. I used to hitchhike a lot when I was younger, and for the most part, have met some really cool people and had some great experiences. This one kind of freaked me out though. I was hitchhiking through Idaho on my way to Missoula, Montana. I think I was 19 or 20 when this happened. I am male. At Sage Junction, outside of Rexburg, Idaho, I got picked up by a cowboy, redneck trucker who said he would take me to Butte, which was two and a half hours and halfway to where I was going. I don't remember what we talked about on the way, but it was pretty uneventful and he seemed to me like a normal truck driving cowboy guy. We stopped in Dillon and I helped him unload some furniture, then drove an hour more to Butte. At Butte, I-15 hits I-90. He said he was going east to Billings while I was going west to Missoula. There is a truck stop at the junction called Rocker, and he offered to buy me something to eat at the restaurant. It was starting to get dark and rain clouds were gathering. By the time we got done eating, it was raining pretty good. At that point, I was prepared to pull out my blue tarp and find some trees I could shelter in for the night. I wasn't sure really what I was going to do. I wasn't looking forward to sleeping in the rain but I was prepared to. As I get ready to walk out into the rain with my pack, Cowboy Trucker says, Hey, look, give me $11 and you can sleep on the floor of my hotel room. It was probably the last of my money, but okay, sure. It was really coming down. He gets a room. I give him $11. And we settle in and start watching TV. After a while, I asked him if he smoked weed, and we smoked a joint. A little while after that, he asked me if I would walk on his back. I thought that this was kind of weird, but I had felt absolutely zero weird vibes up to that point. I thought, you know, he is a big guy, sits in his truck all day. His back probably is pretty fucked up. So I took off my shoes and walked around on his back a little. And yes, I did leave my socks on. Shortly after that, we both turned in. He on the bed and me on a little sofa on the other side of the room. It must have been three or so in the morning when it happened. I woke up suddenly and he was right there, on his hands and knees, completely naked face about a foot from mine. He was just staring at me. I had a buck folding knife in a sheath on my belt, and I think I had it out of the sheath and was unfolding it with one hand pretty quickly. At least, I remember that it was open before I said anything. We were just staring at each other. It probably wasn't very long. It probably felt longer than it was, because I had all kinds of adrenaline going. I said, what the hell are you doing? He looked up to me and smiled. I guess what you would call coyly. He said in a sing-song voice, I was just thinking. That's the part that still weirds me out. He was a big guy. Everything about him, up to, I guess, the walking on the back part, was pure marble man John Wayne cowboy trucker. Now he was talking like a little girl, all shy and batting his eyes at me. I had the knife out by my side of my leg and was trying to decide if I should poke him now while I had that element of surprise or wait until things escalated. I said, Whatever you're thinking, go back over to your bed and think it over there. Now, I guess this is the anticlimactic part of the story, because that is exactly what he did. He crawled on his hands and knees over to the bed 
hopped in and started masturbating. I stayed on the sofa. I don't remember what I was thinking at that point. Maybe scared that if I went for the door, he might come after me. He was a lot bigger than me. When I tell this story to my friends, they never believe me when I tell them that I fell back asleep. But that's what I did. Slept a couple hours more. Woke up and made coffee on that little hotel machine and told him, Thanks for the food and shelter, buddy, but I gotta go now. <laughs>